I thought on this video, I would do a grammatical study with commentary of Genesis chapter three, the fall of Adam and Eve and what happened. It's interesting in chapter one, we saw God's creative activity and what he accomplished in creating the world, the heaven and the earth. In chapter two, we saw the Lord creating marriage. And now we come to chapter three, where given everything, Adam and Eve disobey the Lord and sin. And the result is a fall that has impacted the human race ever since. And we find that spoken of in Romans chapter five. But let me just read the Hebrew and make comments as we go through. Notice now the serpent was more crafty than any beast, wild beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Indeed, is it that God said, you shall not eat from every tree of the garden? Notice the uh, Hanachash here is put forth for emphasis. Now the serpent. And the serpent in Jewish interpretation is understood to be the Yetzirah, the bad thought that uh, people have. Uh, however, it's my own understanding that the serpent was a real literal serpent that Satan used. In the New Testament, Jesus says in John 8 that Satan was a liar from the beginning. That Satan used and was speaking uh, through the serpent. And so we'll see not only the judgment on the serpent, the snake, but also upon Satan. So behind all of this, I believe, is the temptation, the first temptation that Satan brought, which caused the fall. And we'll see that again described in John 8. So it reads, now the serpent, Haya. Notice Haya is a cow perfect, third masculine singular, from the root Haya. So the serpent was Arum. Arum means subtle or crafty. And when you think about this word, Notice in verse 25, and we've alluded to this in another video, you have the two of them were arumim. Uh, and now we have two different words here. Arum means to be naked. Arumim is the plural form of that. Where, where here, arum means to be crafty and or subtle. Uh, and so it looks like what is happening here is a word, can I say, literary assonance, where we're hearing the word arumim back to back with the word arum. And it's almost like the text is saying, be careful that the arum serpent does not take away your arumim, your innocency, which happened in the fall. So as we read on, Mikol Hayat Hasadeh, that is, the serpent was more crafty than every bee, wild beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. Notice Asa is the cow perfect third masculine singular from Asa. Vayomer El Haisha, and he said unto the woman. Vayomer is the cow in perfect third masculine singular from Amar. 
So the serpent said unto the woman, Is it indeed af ki amar Elohim that God had said? Uh, notice here, uh, amar is a cow perfect, third masculine singular from amar. And then here is the uh, temptation of Satan speaking, I believe, through the serpent. Lo tochalu mikol ha'etz hagan. Did God say that you should not eat from every tree of the garden? Notice tochalu is from achal, to eat. It is a cow uh, imperfect second uh, person plural from achal. Notice the, the tab prefix and the u suffix, putting it into the imperfect second person plural. So is it that God said, you shall not eat from every tree or any tree of the garden? But tomer ha'isha el ha'nachash, mipri ha'etz ha'gan nochel. That is, and the woman said unto the serpent, from the fruit of the tree of the garden, we may freely eat. Uh, but there's only one prohibition. She'll go into that in the next verse. Notice, the tomer ha'isha, tomer is from the root amar to say. And here we have a cow uh, imperfect second feminine singular from Amar. So the woman said, and notice the Bob here is a Bob conversive or a Bob consecutive. It's turning the imperfect and putting it into the past. So uh, the woman said, El Hanahash and to the serpent, Mepri Eitz Hagan no hell. That is from the fruit of the tree of the garden we may eat. And I take here eights to be a collective singular. From the fruit <coughs> of the trees of the garden we may eat. Notice the noon prefix here <coughs> from the root ahal to eat. It's the cow uh, imperfect first common plural in ahal. <coughs> So from the fruit of the tree of the garden, we may eat. Uh, but there's one tree that we can't. Notice verse 3. U mipari ha'etz asher betoch ha'gan amar Elohim lo tochalu mimenu velo teku'u bo pen temutum. But from the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, God said, you shall not eat from it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. <laughs> Notice here, uh, from the fruit of the tree, which is in the midst of the garden, but from it, God has said, uh, Notice here, uh, Amar again is the cow perfect third masculine singular from Amar. You shall not eat from it. Lo tochalu mimenu. Notice here, you shall not eat. Tochalu is from Achal. It is the cow imperfect <coughs> second masculine plural from Achal. You shall not eat from it. And notice men and who becomes men menu. The, the, the noon in the men by progressive assimilation goes into the following mem. That's why we have the doggish forte. And <clears throat> is like a hinge. And historically it would have read men, men, who. And the hay of the who, we could say, by reverse assimilation, went back into the noon. A little bit about why we have the two doggish fortes, one in the mem and one in the noon. 
so you shall not eat from it, nor velo tiku bo pen temutun, nor shall you touch it. Notice uh, tiku is from naga uh, to touch. Here we have a pay noon verb. Ten geu becoming tik geu with the doubling <coughs> of the gimel because of progressive assimilation of the noon of the root into the gimel. And notice here we have a cow imperfect as well, second uh, plural, masculine and plural from naga. <laughs> you shall not touch it, lest temutun, you shall die. This is from the root mot to die. And notice here uh, we have a cow imperfect again, second uh, person plural from mut, uh, uh, lest you shall die. Uh, then we move on. In other words, there's the warning. <laughs> and we're talking about not only physical death, but spiritual death, <clears throat> a separation from the Lord by being driven out of the garden, which will happen after the fall. So we move on to verse four. Vayomer hanachash el ha'isha. And the serpent said unto the woman. Notice vayomer is from amar again, cow imperfect, third masculine singular from amar. And that vav uh, turns it over and puts it into the past. So the serpent said unto the woman, Lo motemutun, <coughs> you will not surely die. <coughs> Notice here, mot is the cow infinitive absolute functioning adverbially as an adverb here. You shall not surely, and we would translate it that way, temutun, you shall not surely die. And notice again, we have the same root, mut or mot, from uh, temutun is the uh, cow imperfect. Again, second masculine plural uh, from the root mot. You shall not surely die. Again, <clears throat> here's a denial of what God's word has said. And temptation works that way as well. Uh, what begins to happen is a questioning of God's word. <laughs> and the Lord has said certain things are wrong <clears throat> in scripture, and certain things one should not do. Uh, it's not that he's being stingy. He gives total freedom in so many areas. But there are certain things that are, we could say, no-nos that you should not do. And I think the text is teaching this as well as the original fall that occurred. And the temptation is to deny the effectiveness of God's word. So in verse 5, Ki yodea Elohim ki biyom aholhem mimenu for the Lord God, for God knows that in the day of your eating from it, notice here, we have a causal clause uh, where he's giving a reason why God has given the prohibition. And really it's an attack on the Lord. For the Lord knows, notice Judea is from the root yada. It is a cow participle masculine singular from yada. Notice we have your holim, your oval, and your tseri, and your furtive pathak under the ayat. <laughs> For God knows that in the day al holhim of your eating. Notice here al holhim is from achal to eat. Here again we have the infinitive. A construct with him, your pronominal suffix, second masculine uh, plural. Uh, so the Lord knows in the day of your eating from it, men knew. There we have that men who becoming men again. 
from it, the nifkahu enechem, v'yitim ke Elohim, yodea tov vara. The Lord knows that in the day of your eating from it, your eyes will be open. Nifkahu is from pakah, to open. And here we have a nifal, uh, a nifal imperfect uh, third person plural from pakah. So your eyes shall be open. And notice the nifal, or a perfect here, is showing a passive stem. Nifal is passive. So your eyes shall be open, and you shall be as God. V'yitim ke Elohim. Notice v'yitim is from haya to be. It's a cal perfect second masculine plural from haya, and with a vav conversive that is turning it over. So you shall be as God. Uh, by the way, uh, historically, this would have been the heyitim becoming the yitim, where the shiva under the vav uh, prefix, the vav hafik or the vav conversive, <coughs> changed to a hirik because of the following shiva. At any rate, you shall be <coughs> as God. Yodea or or yod yodea, I should say yodea tovara, knowing good and evil. Notice uh, yodea is from yada to know. It's the cow participle, masculine plural from yada. Notice the holem here, and then in after the yod, and then the set of yod. Uh, putting it in a in a plural uh, participial form uh, as God knowing <coughs> good and evil. <coughs> this word or this phrase is looking at let's say maturity, but here in a negative sense. Uh, before the boy knows good from evil, we're told in Isaiah, for example, chapter seven, meaning before this. Uh, son comes to a certain age of, uh, let's say, beginning to understand uh, things and, and maturing. That's the idea. But I think here it's looking at a negative sense. In other words, it's okay to have knowledge and maturity, but not when it goes against God. And I think the context here is that we are always to be like children before the Lord. His word needs to be what we obey, what we hearken to, and uh, we don't really uh, have, you know, often when a person becomes a teenager, I remember I thought I knew everything and when I became that age, and, and now I realize I hardly know anything. But this is, I think, the idea here that you'll be like God. And uh, he doesn't want you to have this knowledge. Uh, he's trying to selfishly keep it from you. <laughs> Seems to be <coughs> the, uh, the point here. And, he, and I think with the Lord, we need to always be childlike uh, because he is our divine heavenly father. And so knowing good from evil and so the temptation then follows after this question and after this challenge. But tera isha ki tov ha eitz le ma'achal, le ma'achol, ve hi ta'avahu le enayim, ve nechmad ha eitz le haskil betekach mepiryo that is, and the woman saw. 
Notice Vatera is from Ra'a, a Lamed He root. And it's a cow uh, imperfect third feminine singular from Ra'a, where the He has elided or dropped out. And the Tav is showing that it's a third feminine singular. So the woman saw Kitov Ha Eitz Lema'aho. That is, that the tree <laughs> was good for food, ma'acha, that it was good to eat, good for food. And that it was uh, pleasant uh, or a delight to the eyes. The nechmad ha'etz askil, And that it was desired, the tree was desired to cause one to be wise. Notice nechmad is from kamad to desire. And here we have a, a nifal participle, masculine singular from kamad. So the tree was desired. <clears throat> Notice in a nifal participle, <clears throat> The last syllable has a comment followed by uh, the final uh, consonant. The two last syllables contain a comment. And the nifal often, uh, just a simple nifal, perfect, it'll have a paka. But here, nachman, it is a participle, masculine singular from haman, nifal. So the tree was desired to cause one to be wise. Notice sakal is to be wise. And that hey prefix with an A-I vowel pattern, a pathak hirik yod, is showing a hifil stem to cause uh, one to be wise. And so it's not only pleasant to the eyes, but it has to do with one's pride causing one to be wise in a wrong sense, in a negative sense. And often uh, when we think of temptation, there is the lust of the eyes and uh, the pride of life. All these things we're seeing here because she saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant for the eyes, a desired for the eye, tree to be desired for the eyes, the fruit, and it was desired to make one wise. So here we have something that looks good and something that looks desirable and it adds wisdom. But the problem is it's against God's clear instruction to them. And that's the way temptation works. Uh, if one goes against the clear teaching of the word of God. It may look pleasant, but in the end, it's not. It leads to death. And I think this is what the text is also uh, teaching. And then uh, we talked about lehaskil is the hifil infinitive construct from sakal, to cause to be wise. But tekach mitpiryo, and she took from uh, its fruit. Notice that tekach is from lakach to take. It's a, a cow uh, imperfect third feminine singular from lakach, where the lamed by progressive assimilation has gone into the cult. And we have that vav hafik or the vav conversive, and it puts it into the past, that imperfect. And so she took from its fruit the tohel, and she ate. Notice tohel, again, is from achal, cow, imperfect, uh, third feminine singular from achal, uh, with a vav, again, uh, conversive. And she ate, and she gave also to her husband with her. But titain is from the root natan. Again, it's a cow, imperfect third feminine singular from natan. Notice in these pay noon verbs, the noon has assimilated into the tav, the second tav here, 
by progressive assimilation. But titain was uh, historically uh, va tintain, where the noon by progressive assimilation has gone into the top. And so, and she gave indeed to her husband. She gave it to her husband and that was with her, the Yochal, and he ate. Notice Yochal is from Achal, cow imperfect, third masculine singular from Achal, with the Bob conversive or the Bob consecutive. So we're now having finished this, we dealt with the temptation. And it is interesting, uh, basically, when you do a comparison with the biblical text here and the uh, Adapa text <coughs> in Akkadian, what a difference. In the Adapa text, the God uh, had told uh, the uh, Adapa not to eat if he was offered any food. And uh, he listened to the God that told him that, I believe it was Eop. And uh, when the other gods offered him the food, he refused it because he was told, they're really trying to destroy you with that food. So he turned it down and then all the gods laughed and said, well, you just lost immortality. <clears throat> what a difference between what we have here. <coughs> Excuse me. We're going to see that God told the truth. In the day of you, that you eat it, you will die. And we'll see that spiritual death occurring. So what a difference between the Adapa myth and the historical, the biblical historical account of original creation and the original fall. And we also need to read this text later with Romans chapter five. We'll learn that after we look at the results of the fall, that in one transgression, it caused all people to have, uh, can I say, guilt as well. And everyone is under that guilt because of what happened in Adam. And we find this in Romans chapter uh, five, and we'll do that later when we move through this text. But praise God, the second Adam, Jesus Christ, undid what first Adam did and uh, what the first pair did, we could say. And the good news is that in the second Adam, we can have eternal life, uh, where what happened in first Adam brought separation, as we'll see, from the Lord. What happens in second Adam, Jesus, when we accept his great sacrifice for us in the book of Romans, we have eternal life.